They cannot wait to get home. After their long day, their spouse goes to sleep. Their children go to sleep. And they want their own private time to do what? Just to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To cry to Him. To complain to Him. To talk to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will find that whether they are in need or not in need, when they are in trouble or not in trouble, they just love to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. They make dua when they are in need and they make dua when they are not in need. Because a lot of us have forgotten that dua is not just about when you need something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should not be a person who only turns to Allah when they need something or when they are in strife, when they are in hardships. A mu'min makes no difference. Whose priority is Allah. They turn to Allah when they're happy and when they're sad, when they're in need and when they're not. You know why? Because they truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hands up if you've ever fallen in love with someone. Now I think every person who's married here should have their hand up. You should be in love with your wife or your husband. Right there you go. <laughs> now those of you who said that you love your wife and those of you who said you love your husband, I'm presuming that you've been married for a few years now. Okay, we're talking to the people who've been married, you know, 10 years and above. I'm sure your love has become very ordinary and you become used to it, right? So let's take, back, take you back about 10 years ago when you first met your spouse. How was your love then? You know, when you were engaged? What did you do? Your beloved was always on your mind, right? When you go to sleep, you dream about them. <laughs> When you wake up, the first one you mention is them. That becomes your daily dhikr almost. So when you love that person so much, they're always on your mind. You want to call them, you want to speak to them. When you're at school, you're doing your exam, right? And you can't help but suddenly write your beloved's name accidentally. You think, what am I doing, right? You see them everywhere you go. You don't really need them. But because you feel an attachment to them, a love, you find yourself wanting to talk to them. You find yourself remembering them. So you start making dhikr. But your dhikr is the loved one. On a different note, imagine you've gone overseas. Who do you start remembering? You remember the loved ones. When you're in pain, who do you remember? You remember your loved ones. The more you are distant from your loved ones, the more you remember them. Not because you need them, but because you love them. Allah should be the most beloved to you more than anyone else. And if you love anyone more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, listen carefully, if you love anyone more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then I would say that you are at risk of one day becoming harmful to yourself. You may be at risk of one day becoming suicidal. And I'm not joking. Why? Because anything or anyone you love more than Allah will one day leave you. You don't own your spouse. You don't own your children. You don't own your wealth. You don't even own yourself. My evidence? When you were born, you were born crying. You didn't want to come out into this world. You said, take me back inside. But you had to come out because you don't own yourself. You don't control yourself. And when you come to die, you can't give yourself another minute to live. Why? Because you don't own yourself. If a sickness befalls you, you can't take it away from you because you don't own yourself. You can prevent death from the people you love, but you can't because you don't own them. You don't own anything. You and I don't own anything, not even ourselves. We all belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From Him we came and to Him we shall return. So if your love is for something that is temporary, then remember what Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said at the time of the death of our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What happened? 
Umar radiallahu anhu stood up and he held his sword saying, anyone who says that Rasulullah has died, I will strike his neck. I don't believe that he died. Ali radiallahu anhu, he became dumbfounded, he couldn't talk anymore. Another Sahabi, he fell to the ground, couldn't walk anymore. Another one said, if it's true, then oh Allah, make me blind so I may not see anyone but Rasulullah after this. Another one said, oh Allah, if it's true, take my life because I don't want to live another minute. After that, it tr they truly loved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But what did Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu say? He turned around and said to the people, Man kana ya'budu Muhammadan fa inna Muhammadan qad mat. Whoever used to worship Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has died. He's gone. Wa man kana ya'budu Allah fa inna Allah hayun la yamu. But whoever loves Allah and worshiped Allah, then Allah is everlasting. He will never die. Imagine if Abu Bakr did not come out and remind the people that your love is first and foremost to Allah, which explains why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not leave his prophets to live forever. Because people will probably end up worshiping them instead of Allah. Their love for them would, su would supersede Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love. Knowing that they will leave us forgetting that they came from Allah, that these prophets, you will not love them if it wasn't for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love. Turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the lesson because Allah is everlasting and He will never die. Allah is with me wherever I go. And when you die, you return back to Him. So our ultimate love is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when that thing leaves you, then you will become suicidal. I remember back in... Uh, you call it elementary school here. We call it high school. Is that right? That is elementary. Elementary is the high school or secondary schooling. I remember when I was in form two or year eight of my schooling, we used to walk to school and there was this bridge that we crossed. It was above a, a river. One day we're walking to school in back in Australia and there was a dead body, a dead body in the river. This man had jumped off the bridge and killed himself. The ambulances came and, you know, as children, we ask a lot of questions. How did he die? What did he die for? You know, what happened? He had left a note, obviously as a non-Muslim, that didn't know what his purpose was. The note said that his longtime girlfriend left him for another man. So he had no reason to live anymore. So he killed himself. He couldn't bear the pain. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. He worshipped his girlfriend. And his whole life was for his girlfriend. So when his girlfriend left him, he took his life. You remember that actor? What's his name? Robin Williams? Remember Robin Williams? Anyone heard of Robin Williams, that comedian? Yes? Robin Williams, famous actor from America, very famous actor. He committed suicide about two years ago or less. He has all the wealth of the world. You always see him cheerful, laughing, joking. But he went from divorce to divorce. I mean, finally he hanged himself and killed himself. No reason to live. Why? Because obviously the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was not there. The purpose, which is Allah, was not there. 